This video is to help you revise the topic of blood for the Irish Leaving Cert biology course. This chapter is mostly to do with the composition of blood, so what is blood made up of? So plasma is the liquid part of the blood, it's this straw or yellow-like colour, and it makes up 55% of the blood, so most of the blood is plasma. In addition to the plasma, blood is made up of the blood cells, the red blood cells, the white blood cells and the platelets. So approximately 55% of the blood is made up of this straw-like or yellow coloured liquid known as plasma. So what is plasma? Well, it's mostly water, approximately 90% of it is water, but it does contain important plasma proteins, large proteins, for example, clotting proteins, fibrinogen being one, and antibodies. It also contains salts and its function is transport. So you should be able to detail exactly what's transported in plasma. It was a previous exam question. So you could give examples like nutrients, waste such as urea, oxygen, carbon dioxide, enzymes, antibodies and hormones. Heat is also transported and this is important for controlling temperatures. Blood is also made up of the blood cells, the erythrocytes, which are the red blood cells, the leukocytes, the white blood cells and the thrombocytes, which are the platelets. And it's important you know the correct names. So let's now discuss the blood cells. So we'll start with the red blood cells. These are called the erythrocytes. These are the most numerous of all the cells in the blood. And one of the most interesting things about the red blood cells is that they don't have a nucleus at maturity. And if they have no nucleus, this means that they cannot undergo mitosis. So that's very important to remember. They also have no mitochondria. So that's very important to also remember. And they have a particular shape Red blood cells are biconcave and this gives them a larger surface area for gas exchange and flexibility to make their way in and out of those very small blood vessels. Each red blood cell contains many millions of haemoglobin molecules and it can fit so many in because remember it doesn't have a nucleus and there are no mitochondria. Each haemoglobin molecule contains four atoms of iron so it's very important that you take in sufficient iron in your diet. Without this you simply couldn't make the haemoglobin necessary for transporting all of that oxygen. So the red blood cells are made in the red bone marrow of long bones, the sternum, the ribs and the vertebrae. The function of the red blood cells is to transport oxygen. That's the most important role. However, bear in mind that the red blood cells can also transport carbon dioxide. However, most CO2 is transported dissolved in the plasma as hydrogen carbonate ions. So the red blood cells transport oxygen and it's all because of haemoglobin, this protein, this iron containing protein that has a great affinity for oxygen and combined four oxygen molecules. So every haemoglobin combined four oxygen molecules forming oxyhemoglobin. Oxyhemoglobin will then give up those four oxygen molecules when needed. So let's go on to the white blood cells or the leukocytes. Make sure you know the name leukocytes. So leukocytes do have nuclei, so they have a very large nucleus. That's one of their distinctive features. There are two groups that we have to know about, the monocytes and the lymphocytes. White blood cells are also made in the red bone marrow and their main function is to fight infection or disease. For our course, we have to know about two types of white blood cells, the monocytes and the lymphocytes. So let's start with the monocytes first. Monocytes are phagocytes. Phagocytes are cells that can move around and surround bacteria and engulf them and destroy them. So monocytes can become these large phagocytes known as macrophages, which are really important for the defence system. Lymphocytes are the other group of white blood cells and they are very distinctive because they have this large round nucleus. There are two groups that are B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. B cells or B lymphocytes produce antibodies and T lymphocytes, there are four types of T lymphocyte and they're all part of the defence system. The final part of the blood are the platelets or the thrombocytes. These are in fact fragments of larger cells so they don't have a nucleus and their function is in clotting. Blood is grouped according to two systems. Firstly, we have the ABO system and then the rhesus factor or the rhesus system. And these two systems combined give you the full classification of exactly what type of blood you have. So let's start with the blood groups, the basic blood groups. So you could be blood group A, B, AB or O. The ABO system is all to do with whether or not you have particular molecules called antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. Blood group A means you've A antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. B, 
B antigens on the surface of your red blood cells, AB, both A and B antigens on the surface of your red blood cells, and blood group O means zero, you have no antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. What you have to consider about antigens is that foreign antigens will cause the production of antibodies, so your body will recognise them as foreign and produce antibodies. This is of huge importance, particularly if you get the wrong type of blood, incompatible blood. Your body will produce antibodies and this will cause the blood to clump, which is very serious. So it's important to know your blood group, particularly for a blood transfusion. So what type of blood can you receive? So let's pretend that you're blood group B. That means you have B antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. So B is normal for you. And what you consider now is not introducing any foreign antigens into your system. So what would be foreign? Well, A. That means that I cannot receive A blood and I cannot receive AB blood. So I can receive B and I can receive O because O has zero foreign antigens on the surface of the red blood cells. In addition to the ABO system, there's the rhesus factor or the rhesus system. So you could be blood group A, you've A antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. And if you're A positive, it means that you have the rhesus factor as well. If you're A negative, it means that you have A antigens on the surface of your red blood cells and you don't have the rhesus factor on the surface of your red blood cells. The presence or absence of the rhesus factor is hugely important during pregnancy, particularly if a mother is rhesus negative and gives birth to a rhesus positive baby. During the birthing process, the mother's blood and the baby's blood can mix, and this can introduce the foreign rhesus factor from the baby's blood into the mother. This results in the mother producing antibodies against the rhesus factor. This is a problem for the next pregnancy if the baby is rhesus positive. Because the mother has produced antibodies against the rhesus factor, these can cross through the placenta into the baby's blood, attacking it, and it interferes with the blood of the baby, reducing its ability to carry oxygen. It's known as rhesus disease, but this is monitored regularly and the mother is given an anti-D injection, which prevents this. So at the end of this chapter, you should know the composition of the blood. Exactly what is blood made up of? What is plasma? What is it mostly made up of? What is transported in plasma with specific examples? Name the blood cells, their proper names. Know the details relating to each type of blood cell. What is the function of each type of blood cell? Name the blood grouping systems and what happens if you receive incompatible blood. So do all of the past examination questions and check the answers with the official marking schemes. The best of luck. Don't forget to use your textbook and to listen to your teacher.